Okay, I'm going to record some treatment planning here, and this case is a patient that uh, has done quite a bit of restorative work, but right now, the moment, we're talking about putting a uh, tooth here in this number 30 site, and the site had been grafted, and it kind of looks a little deficient out on the buckle, and this patient has had a history of not healing all that well from, from grafting. And so I was a little concerned um, The you know, two soccer, normally soccer grafts are just a home run out of the park. I mean, you extract a tooth, you, you do an allograft, and they come back absolutely beautiful. But for some reason, this patient doesn't, doesn't heal that well. And um, one other option, one other uh, situation involved tooth number 10 for her, where we ended up having to do a bridge, and I'm suspicious that I might have to here. So I started out by taking a CBCT and kind of evaluating the bone. And, you know, here's the nerve down here. This is an implant. This is a 4607. And in trying to get anything bigger than that in here, um, it just wasn't working. And I'm, I'm really not comfortable with a, a small implant like that to restore this tooth. And in order to even get this in there, I've got to be pretty deep. So I'm a good, you know, seven, eight millimeters below the tissue line. Uh, this is not a good alignment for, for planting, but all I was really wanting to do is see how much bone I have. So I'm not too concerned about that at this point. So I think I'm going to opt for doing a three unit bridge here as uh, much as I don't like having to do that. I, I think it's, probably in this patient's best interest to do so. So I flip over to ExoCAD, the, the, the CAD program, the dental CAD, and I'm going to quickly put a tooth in here so that I can make a provisional bridge when we prep this for a three-unit bridge. Now, I could do, I'm going to skip the articulator at this point, um, I could do temporary shells. My personal preference is to print a model and make a PVS matrix and make the temporary direct in the mouth that way. So there's no gingiva to design. I just hit next. And I'm just going to show you how quick and easy this is for, for ExoCAD. And here again, ExoCAD has really made our workflows 95 or higher percent digital. And that's the beauty of this. I can, I don't have to go to the office and do waxing anymore. I don't have to send this out to the lab to get them to wax it for me or have an assistant do it. I mean, it's just very quick to do it. If I go in here and I tell it the mesial contact of tooth number 30, which is going to be, let's say, right about here. And now the distal contact of tooth number 30 is going to say about here. And so I have a tooth in the position. I can go next, and it'll take me to tooth placement where I can just begin to um, position this a little bit better. We can size the tooth like so. I like to take these teeth and um, Pull them down through the model. And I can widen this to fill in a little bit of that black triangle, if you will. Similar scenario up here on the front end. And, yeah, you can play with this as much as you want, but for purposes of making a temporary, it doesn't have to be anything crazy fancy. So let me hit next. It'll take me to freeforming where I can kind of uh, fill this in a little bit if I want to. Add a little wax right there. 
and then let's move that down. Let's add a little bit right here. Once again, you don't have to get crazy. This is probably perfectly adequate for being able to fabricate a temporary. I can print this model. My assistants will make me a PVS shim, prepare it for the day of the day of prepping, and we'll prep the two adjacent teeth, pop in a provisional, make my impressions, and be in, in and out quickly. So uh, I'm just going to follow the wizard on through. I don't really have to do any more adapting. Um, I can I can look at the antagonist if I want to. Um, you can you can play with this and adjust the uh, occlusion. The you know my basic intent is I'm just going to adjust this at, at delivery. But if I want to go in here and say bring this further up into occlusion. You just play with the tool that works best. And I can turn on my contact points to see where it's contacting. If I wanted to do this totally correctly, I usually would go in into expert mode And I'm going to correct my antagonist. And, and generally speaking, I like to squeeze them together a little bit to get rid of the influence uh, of the PDL. So I can squeeze that together. Let's say squeeze it together right by about... Uh, let's see, one... That's one tenth. That gives me good solid contact all the way around. Squeezed it together two tenths. That's a little more than I would do for, for a final uh, restoration. But that will be work well for this provisional. And now, even without the antagonist model on, I can begin to see my contact points. So I can go back into freeforming and anatomically adjust this so that I begin to get some contact points on those cuss tips. And I can play with this as much as I want to, but I've already done more than I normally would. And essentially, let's go ahead and include healthy so you can see the contacts on the other adjacent teeth around the arch. And essentially, I would uh, be called this done at this time. So I'm going to hit next. I don't need to really do any other adapting. I can go straight to design the model. And I'm going to design a digital wax up model. And it will give me a model. It'll ask me, I'm a, I want to include my <clears throat> full anatomic. In this in this model. <clears throat> and there we have it. Um, this model is ready to go. This model is ready to throw it right directly on the printer. I can load this on my printer from home. Tell it to print, and when we get to the office the next day, it will be ready for us to make the P, make the, the, the P, process it out, of course, and then make the PBS that I can use for that provisional. So you see the remaining process. 
It wants to do one for the upper arch, but I don't need it, so I can just tell it to skip that. And I could add text to it if I wanted to. And I can put the patient's name right there. <clears throat> I would hit next and then when when I click next on the I'm done it'll kick me out it'll save the files but essentially what I will do is export this model drop it onto my printer bed and have it ready to go come Monday morning okay we'll this is just to show you how we just use digital dentistry and every day. And Exocad absolutely makes your life so much easier because you can create these little models very quickly. No, no concerns. They're absolutely perfect to work from. And um, you, get, you get great outcomes when, when you're able to work like this. So hope this helps. I'll... Uh, send you some more videos. I'm going to start just, just videoing what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and create these videos to put out there. So, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again soon.